welcome to Dead Man Talking. Tonight's story is part three in the story and series entitled I'm part of a cryptid intervention task force. Part three, let's get straight into that. So, let's cut to the chase. Command is on high alert now, more than ever. We have a UAVs in the air at a constant cycle now, monitoring everywhere, close commo with the other bases and beefed up patrols. Things are crazy and tense. But on another note, we've got a new guy to replace Malcolm. For any of you who are questioning who Malcolm is, read the previous post, the link is above. So. Let me get some details about this guy out here. For privacy reasons, I'm going to stereotypically call him Rook, since he's the new guy on the block. Rook was in the Rangers, did four tours in Afghanistan, apparently. He was in the country when I was in there as well. He's kind of wound tight, a bit of a hard ass, so breaking him into how things work here is going to be a challenge to say the least. Especially with how we treat certain populations. You see, when you're briefed into this job, you are told to be the wall to protect the innocent from the evil that goes bump in the night. When you get stationed here and meet these beings though, you realise you have to build a bond with them. And that some of them just want to live in peace and isolation. It took some time, but we've built a very healthy system here. It takes new guys some time to adjust, but after a few patrols, they get the idea and keep up with how we operate. I hoped that this would be the case with Rook. I really did. I ended up being the guy to meet him at the landing pad. The CH-47 landed, the ramp lowered, and the body spilled out. Fresh recruits to replace our losses. I saw him. Close cut hair. That walk of purpose. I extended my hand. Welcome, I'm part of the Hunter team, your new outfit. He looked at me and gripped my hand with a firm shake. Glad to be here and to be of service. What can you tell me about the area? He glanced all over, observing the air crews as they rushed to refuel the Chinook and whatever other aircraft decided to land. I looked at him and gestured to the bunker itself. Well, We've got the werewolves and their lot in the shantytown up north. The deer people to the east and the Sasquatch tribes to the west. I glanced at him as he nodded, taking in the information. Once we entered the base, I took him to our communal quarters, showing him his bunk. Look, Rook, we've got a system here with all of these groups. A system that works and benefits all of us. Just, just follow the orders of our CO. Do your job, and we all make it home alive, and with our limbs attached. Got it? He nodded at me, dropping his duffel bag next to his bunk. I got it. When is the unit heading out? He sat down, looking up at me as two guys ran down the hallway putting on their gear. We've got a patrol up north in a few hours. Have to reach out to the shanty town about a sighting reported the other day. Simple and to the point. Rook nodded at me, and we left it like that. A few hours later, we gear up and head out, reaching the shanty town. We unloaded and calmly walked in, dressed down for the op. We usually roll out in full operator gear, but due to the relationship with the shanty town, we were just in our combat gear, minus the combat shirt. So, a regular t-shirt under our plate carriers. I nodded and waved at familiar faces with Conrad making his way to where the Alphas are. He greets them and sits down, starting conversation, leaving us to interact with the locals and monitor the area. Everyone was calm, save for Rook. He stood there, eyeing everyone. I knew his body language all too well, the same way you'd watch an area in Afghanistan, always waiting for something to pop off. The locals sensed his unease as well keeping their distance from him. One thing led to another and the next thing we know 
commotion near one of the RVs with Rook zip tying a man in front of his family. The kids are crying and the wife shoves them inside him again to growling. The husband is pleading with the wife but she doesn't listen. Rook is now backing up, aiming at her with his rifle, telling her to stand down at a fever pitch. He's freaking out as he's watching her turn into a werewolf form. Shit was about to hit the fan and no one stepped in. I sprint for it, getting between the two. I know the family very well. The kids come and run around the M wraps when we pass by. I call her by her name, pleading with her to calm down. She's fully transformed by now and stomps towards me. I'm calm, but Rook is freaking out and shaking. She sniffs me and snarls, slowly reverting to her human form. Everyone is watching now, even the Alphas. Conrad is with them, his eyes hidden under a pair of aviators, but I know he's pissed. I untie the husband and apologise. He smiles and pats me on the shoulder, understanding and rushing inside. I turn to Rook and grab him by his strap on his plate carrier, dragging him up against a nearby tree and landing a right hook across his face. Everyone is watching us in silence. Rook shoves me, asking me what my issue is. I explain to him that these people are no threat, that they respect our boundaries, that they just want to live in peace. He retorts that our job is to protect humanity. I grab him again, my gloved hands around his throat now. It takes a couple of guys to tear me off of him. The ride back to base is tense, with everyone silent. As we arrive, Conrad pulls Rook to the side, speaking to him, explaining to him that his stunt could have escalated the situation and caused the deaths of many individuals at the shantytown. We ended up being called into briefing soon after. Command found where the Wendigos had been migrating from. We are being mobilised with an armoured and aviation task force to intercept and destroy them. Are we out for a bit? This is a big operation. I'll try to relay as soon as I get back. Stay safe, everyone. Remember, nothing, bullets, cannot cure. Wow, excellent, excellent little chapter there. Um, I was waiting for chapter four to come out as well, guys, hence why I didn't upload last night. But uh, if it does pop up soon, then I'll get that up as well. Hope you enjoyed the story. Of course, please do let us know down below in the comments. As ever, please do like and share. And remember, above all, be safe, not sorry.